I'm sure by now you've heard of the concept of VARD coding, and if you haven't, it's the idea of building software by offloading all of the work to an LLM and letting it do all of the thinking rather than handwriting the code yourself. This is a really popular way of working now due to modern IDEs like Cursor or Windsurf. And the whole idea came from a sort of jokey tweet a couple of months ago from a guy called Andre Carpathy, and I'll just show you that tweet now. He said, there's a kind of coding I call vibe coding, where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. It's possible because the LLMs, e.g. Curse Composer with Sonnet, are getting too good. I ask the dumbest things like, decrease the padding on the sidebar by half because I'm too lazy to find it. I accept all, always, I don't read the diffs anymore. When I get error messages, I just copy and paste them in with no comments. Usually, that fixes it. So I think this tweet was sort of posted initially in a half-jokey way, but a lot of people have taken this seriously and actually started to build full applications working this way. And it has kind of pushed things to the extreme. Typically, the intention of these kind of IDEs is to support a software engineer in handwriting code, but helping them out in certain areas. And this is obviously a fantastic workflow to increase your efficiency and also give you the ability to explore different branches of code, try different things out before you actually settle on a solution. So I think this is a really interesting way of working and maybe an indicator of where the industry is gonna be moving. You know, every time we have a substantial technological breakthrough, the way that software engineers work completely changes. It reminds me actually of a time I was back at university and the professor at the time told me that when he was at university, he used to have to write all of his code and actually get it printed onto a punch card before handing in the submission that way. If they wrote a single bug in that code, they would have to reprint the punch card and resubmit it again to actually get their project approved. So if any mistake was put in, it was obviously a really long feedback loop to get that fixed. This would mean that when writing software in that kind of situation, you have to be extremely stringent in your testing approach and be very methodical about the code that you actually end up putting into print. Now that all changed when you could just write code in an IDE and run it directly on a computer. I'm sure people at the time would have scoffed at the idea that suddenly you didn't have to be as strict or as stringent with the code that you were writing. Now this seems very similar to the situation we're in now because when you're writing code, you're not necessarily planning everything out ahead of time. You're sort of just writing out features and trying to explore and get a mental model of what you actually want to do through the action of writing code. Now, with the help of these LLMs, that process is drastically accelerated. You can explore many different branches before coming back to a solution that you actually want to stick on. And this just gives you the opportunity to move so much more quickly compared to before. I don't think necessarily vibe coding is a negative thing, although I think the idea of vibe coding is pushing that idea to the absolute extremes. I think it's also an indicator of where the industry is going to be moving in the next 5, 10, 20 years. Like in 10 years, people are probably going to look back at the idea of writing all of your code by hand and it's just going to seem completely archaic. I think this is actually an indication of how the role of a software engineer is changing and how we're going to have this kind of symbiotic relationship with LLMs. And rather than just being code artisans and handwriting everything, you're going to start to see roles evolve and change into being a sort of software orchestrator with far more emphasis on system design and architecture and all of these more high level things, leaving the art of writing the actual code to the LLMs. You know, that idea might sound a little bit extreme with the current technology because when you push these LLMs into a corner, they can very easily hallucinate. But this technology is improving week by week and the hallucinations are getting less and less frequent. I think it will get to a point where the LLMs are so good at writing code that it literally becomes pointless to just write it yourself because it's so much more efficient to speak to a model and have it just write the code out for you. As the bar of advanced technology continues to rise, there's less and less need to understand the low level systems. You know, as a web developer, do you really have a strong grasp of how a processor works at a deep level, of how memory is allocated? Probably not. But when you're writing in languages like C++, of course, that's more of a need. But if you're writing in languages like TypeScript, you just don't need to know that stuff. You can still produce fantastic applications that solve user problems. And all of that low level stuff is just not needed. As the industry continues to move and we're given more and more advanced tools, more and more things are gonna sink below the bar of what's needed to be understood to write effective software. But this is all future stuff. So let's just look at where we are today and what you should be doing today, in my opinion. So for things like POCs, MVPs, 
maybe as an educational exercise or maybe when you're just trying to sort of explore ideas. The whole vibe coding thing is a pretty legit way to work. But if you're working on client projects or pushing things to production when there's high stakes, working on payment systems, working on code that you don't necessarily own, it's not a random side project, for example, it's super important that you understand every single line that you push to production. Because in the modern software industry, there's an expectation that you test everything, that everything is validated and everything is well designed. If you don't do that, then the responsibility is on you. So if you're generating code that you don't understand that goes to production and you can't fix those bugs, you're gonna be in a pretty sticky situation. So try to understand the current limitations of these tools when and when not to use them, but understand that they are improving every single day and the industry is absolutely going to change. So try to move with the times, learn these systems, learn how to use them so you can be the most effective software engineer now and five years in the future. But thanks for watching guys, that's just my opinion after well over a decade in the software industry. If you like this kind of video and wanna see more like it, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.